Well, with triclosan linked to cancer, there's something else to look out for in toothpaste besides just fluoride. Have you heard of the chemical triclosan yet? If not, and you're American, you should know about it because it's probably coursing through your veins right now. And there's a good chance it can screw you up. This is a really long article, so it's going to take me a minute to get through some of these facts. But this is really important because so many people use this toothpaste. And if you know someone that uses it or you use it, you might want to consider this information first. Because what's coming out now, what's coming to light, is that triclosan, the ingredient in the number one best-selling toothpaste of Colgate total, actually has been linked in studies to hormone disruption, endocrine dysfunction, uh, a lot of other things as well, including cancer formation. It's been linked to poor sperm quality, infertility, learning disabilities, and memory problems. The FDA withheld all of the toxicology studies on triclosan from public view having to do with Colgate Total's application for approval. They had to be sued in a lawsuit over the Freedom of Information Act for them to release that information. And Bloomberg News hired three scientists to look through it. And what they found was among the pages were studies showing fetal bone malformations in mice and rats. And that Colgate said these findings weren't relevant. But if you look at those findings in the context of what we know scientifically today, those malformations look like a signal that triclosan is disrupting the endocrine system and throwing off hormonal functioning. Which means it messes with hormones that deal with reproduction and brain development. But they kept that from the public. But what are we talking about here? Triclosan is found all over the place. It's in hand soaps, it's in dish detergent, it's in face washes, all kinds of personal care products, and it's in the Colgate Total toothpaste. But what they're actually finding now, and the FDA even says this on their website too, is that there is no evidence that triclosan and antibacterial soaps and body washes provides any benefit over just washing with regular soap and water. And in fact, it can actually lead to bacterial resistance. And that includes staph bacteria that causes staph infections. And also, if you go back to the environmental working group, they say that it's linked to liver and inhalation toxicity and that low levels of triclosan may disrupt the thyroid function and that wastewater treatment doesn't remove all of this chemical, which means it ends up in the lakes, rivers, and in your water. So now you have this issue where the FDA and, and Colgate are kicking the can back and forth to each other. Colgate is vehemently defending their use of triclosan in the Colgate Total. They have a whole statement here on their website. This is all a lie. It's, it's just a great product and there's nothing wrong with it and we should trust them. And one of the things they cite down here is this Cochrane review. This one right here that was done by the Cochrane Oral Health Group. They're actually part of the Cochrane Collaboration which back in 2005 was hired by the British government amid a huge scandal controversy over the MMR vaccine safety because they were being sued all over the place by parents who had vaccine damage claims. And amid that whole situation, which the British government obviously has substantial financial interest in, they hired the Cochrane Collaboration to write a review of the MMR vaccines. And this paper here was written by a lawyer, uh, Clifford Miller. He says the conclusions of the Cochrane MMR review are not supported by and contradict the evidence presented in the review. Having found inadequate evidence of safety in the paper studied, the review's conclusions that the millions of doses of MMR vaccine administered worldwide are safe is not science-based. It is based on the circular assertion without cited evidence that the vaccine is safe because millions of doses have been administered. But Which is just an extension of the logical fallacy. Would you jump off a bridge if everyone else did? Colgate says, but we have the Cochrane Review. The two people who even wrote the Cochrane Review for Colgate on this issue have stated that the studies don't cover enough years to allow them to investigate the long-term effects. And that is exactly what people should be concerned with. And if you go back to this very long article, and like I said, I'm going to put this link in the description. Please go read this for yourself. It's pretty damning what's happened here. The FDA has known about the potential long-term health dangers of triclosan since 1978, when they first proposed removing it from consumer products. 35 years ago. But they didn't bother writing any rules or regulations for our product makers to follow. Other countries have already banned the use of triclosan in consumer products, but our corporate geniuses are free to put it in all of their crappy products. And in the meantime, Colgate spent 10 years and $38 million 
developing Colgate Total, which should tell you a lot about why they're not ready to take it off the shelf in any way. It took them five years and four different applications to even get this approved in the first place. And in the meantime, you have papers coming out like this one done by Karen Helbig after Colgate Total was approved in the early 2000s, she was looking at the chemical structure of triclosan in relation to the SARS outbreak, and she found that it was similar to thyroid hormones and to polychlorinated biphenyls, so PCBs. And then in the meantime, you have other studies coming out. There was a 2011 paper that said over four years, the use of triclosan in toothpaste had no detectable effects on thyroid function, but it was found also that three of the five authors of that study received grants from Colgate. So why would you, I mean, why would anybody listen to that? It, I just wrote an article on this yesterday about the effects on the hypothalamus, on the pituitary adrenal gland, the thyroid's right in that category. All these things that end up being endocrine disruptors are connected to the fact that that part of the brain is not protected through the blood brain barrier. And so it makes a difference what kind of chemicals we use in our hygiene, the things we eat and those that surround us and what we get medically and through other sources, it makes a huge difference. How many of these harmful chemicals are we going to cover where a company is covering their ass instead of the interest of the people and the regulatory agencies tend to side with the company over the people and won't ban stuff, won't alert the public. I'm getting sick of it. If you go to the FDA's website, what consumers should know about triclosan, one of the things they say here is that Animal studies have shown triclosan alters hormone regulation. So the FDA admits that in animal studies, this is altering the hormones, okay? It says it right there. Then they go on to say, however, data showing effects in animals don't always predict effects in humans. That, to me, just blows my mind. That, the animal studies are what they got this approved with based on that to begin with. Not studies in humans, studies in animals. So how can they then retroactively come back later and say, but animal studies don't always predict effects in humans. So then why do any studies at all? Doesn't make any sense. This is ridiculous. But what we do know is that this is causing all kinds of issues in independent studies that aren't funded directly by Colgate. What you do is you brush your teeth twice a day with this stuff. So it's in toothpaste with a direct line to the bloodstream, and it's in soap where it can be absorbed through the skin. It says here that triclosan is quickly absorbed into the blood. This Helbing said that when these frogs were malformed, that could be seen with doses equivalent to one-tenth of what a person would use. A tenth. So at a tenth of what a person would use in a pea-sized amount, brushing their teeth twice a day, these frogs were malformed. In fact, it's now so pervasive that in biomonitoring tests, residues of triclosan were found in 75% of Americans over six years old. It was found in most people's blood, urine, and even breast milk. We live in a country now where one in six children have developmental disorders, and that number just keeps getting bigger all the time. And stuff like this comes out, and then the company can just do plausible deniability and say, hey, the FDA approved it 17 years ago, so I guess it's fine. You even have the former commissioner of the FDA, David Kessler. The real question is, did Colgate do their job? Because it's the manufacturer's responsibility to assure a product is safe and that relevant information is made public. How can the FDA just continue to let product makers include triclosan as an ingredient, even though they've known it's bad for 35 years? And that's mm -hmm. the whole point that we have a system here where it's the company's job to tell you that their products are safe. Well, they spent 10 years and $38 million trying to get this product approved. Why, after all that, would they tell you if it's not safe? For any level-headed consumer with any common sense at all, this is a call to the precautionary principle. Don't use something that might be dangerous, that might contribute to you getting cancer. Sorry if some corporation wants to make a killing and drive their stock prices. Why would anyone purposely uh, use this stuff when it could cause very serious health risks? Minnesota has become the first state to pass a ban on this which will be in cleansing products, but not in total, because according to John Marty, a state senator who sponsored this bill, Colgate came in and lobbied, and they said it's a safe product. Well, I guess if they say so, then it must be true, because we all know that that's how we do it here in America. We take our safety instructions from the companies who make the products they're trying to make millions of dollars selling.
The only that thing do. that's going to make these people stop selling this is if we the people stand up and say we're not going to put a known hormone disruptor and cancer-causing agent in our mouths.